Welcome to ETMC TV and this informative presentation by Gina Jetter, MD, a board certified neurologist and fellowship trained epileptologist at the ETMC Neurological Institute in Tyler. Dr. Jetter will discuss epilepsy. Thank you for choosing ETMC TV. The brain communicates with the body through electrical activity, and this electrical activity tells the brain to move and things like this. The abnormal electrical activity or burst of activity can cause unusual activities like loss of consciousness or abnormal movements, abnormal sensation. And that abnormal activity leading to that behavioral change is a seizure. Every patient that has a seizure or thinks they have a seizure needs to be evaluated by a neurologist and a seizure specialist or an epileptologist. If you have more than one seizure, um, from an unknown cause or you have m several seizures from a known cause that can't be controlled, then you're diagnosed with epilepsy. There are different types of epilepsy. There's a focal epilepsy that comes from one part of the brain and then there's a generalized epilepsy that comes from the entire brain. And certain medications are better for focal, certain medications are better for generalized and that's why it's important to see a specialist because they can help determine what's the best medication. One in ten people will have a seizure in their lifetime. Um, however, only about one in a hundred will go on to develop a diagnosis of epilepsy. The highest incidence of seizures is in children, and then the second highest incidence is in adults over the age of 65. In about seven out of ten patients, we never know the cause. Um, but in those 30 percent that we do, it's any kind of um, dysfunction or abnormality of the brain, which can include strokes, uh, tumors, it can be from um, infections of the brain like meningitis. Uh, anytime you don't have enough oxygen to the brain, that can also cause a seizure. Children a lot of time will have seizures from fever, very high fever, and that ne isn't necessarily an emergency. Um, in older adults, then when, who are more at risk for stroke, more at risk for um, certain tumors of the brain, then it's more of an emergency. If you were to witness somebody having a seizure, you need to, you know, calm everybody down, make sure everybody around them is calm, make sure the area around the patient is safe, make sure nothing around, you know, if they have a, a tie on or something loose fitting to loosen that. And uh, one of the most common misconceptions is that people will swallow their tongue when they have a seizure and that, that doesn't happen and they need, and people want to put something in their mouth. And that's very dangerous because the patient, whatever is put in their mouth, they can choke on or they can bite down on it and lose teeth. And so people need to understand that the important thing is not to hold the patient down, just let them have the seizure. If it's a convulsive seizure, let it end. And then when it's over with, to just calmly talk to the person that had the seizure, let them know what happened. And if they have a history of epilepsy and they have seizures before, then offer to call a friend or a family member for them. If not, then they'll need to be evaluated by a doctor. If you have a, a one new onset seizure, it is important to go to an emergency room because um, a lot of times seizures are caused from damage to the brain things like infections in the brain like a meningitis, tumors, or strokes. And so it's important to go to the emergency room after you've had an, um, one seizure to, um, to make sure that there's no um, underlying cause for the seizure that needs to be treated emergently. If you feel like you're having a seizure, what you need to do is um, be aware of what's happening right before, during the episode, and after. A lot of times people will lose consciousness and so they're not aware of what's going on during. So often having a family member or a friend that witnesses it to tell you what happened would be good. A lot of people have access to video cameras now because they're on cell phones and so if you can get somebody to videotape what's going on, that's also very important. Write down how often it's happening, how long it lasts, and then bring all that information into your doctor so that they can then refer you to a neurologist or a seizure specialist to evaluate you um, to see if you're having seizures. We diagnosed epilepsy um, by really the history, what the patient is telling us. Um, and then we have a tool called the electroencephalogram or EEG. The brain has normal activity that we can record using the EEG and these misfiring or this burst of abnormal activity can be picked up on an EEG. And so with the story of the patient and with the EEG, 
then combined that will help us diagnose epilepsy. Also what's important is getting imaging of the brain like a CAT scan or an MRI to see if there's any structural cause for the epilepsy. The first line therapy is with medications. There are several different medications that we can use for seizures. The newer medications have fewer side effects and are just as efficacious as the old medications. There's a vagal nerve stimulator, which is similar to a pacemaker, that's placed under the skin. And then there's a lead that is uh, wrapped around the vagus nerve, which goes into the brain and stimulates the vagus nerve. And that's been shown to help with seizures. And then um, there is the option for epilepsy surgery. If, if the patient meets the criteria and they have failed multiple medications, then um, always consider um, surgery as an option. You do have some restrictions on your life with epilepsy. The law in Texas states that you cannot drive for six months after an episode of loss of consciousness. There are other situations where you'd want to avoid if you were to have a seizure, for example, heights. Um, standing water. So I encourage patients that have epilepsy not to go swimming by themselves and if they do that somebody is there with them that is large enough to pull them out of the water if they are to have a seizure. I encourage patients to take showers not baths because even in a very small amount of water patients can drown. Being cautious around power tools, any kind of equipment that you use that if you were to have a seizure you could hurt yourself. About 60% of patients do very well on medications and don't have any seizures. And so most, uh, most people with epilepsy can take their medications and if they're seizure free, can lead a normal life, can go back to driving, um, have jobs. And, and, most, and I encourage patients with that, you know, to go back to work and things like that. In a safe environment, the work might have to be modified. Right. But, um, but yeah, most of my patients are highly functioning with epilepsy. Dr. Jetter is a board-certified neurologist and fellowship-trained epileptologist at the ETMC Neurological Institute in Tyler. She obtained a bachelor's degree from Baylor University before attending the University of Texas Health Science Center, where she received her Doctor of Medicine degree and also served as an internal medicine intern and chief resident in the neurology department.